a little crowded in the studio today. Yeah, it's like, oh shit. We got, okay, we're on. Good. We're on. I got to check that so we know to match it up. Okay, boys. We're good. The founders of Canada Beach Soccer. Oh, well, two of the three. Andre, Shabazz, welcome to the Pals Podcast. Thank you for having us. Uh, of course, of course. For having no, us, of course. Welcome, welcome. Should we hit him with it? Let's get right into you it. You kick it off. You're good with these questions. Tell us about how you guys beat, or how Canada beat Italy in beach soccer. That's a, that's like, not for nothing. You tell people Canada beats Italy in soccer, and like, eh, probably not true. But in this case, it's true. Hit us with it. Um, I think it's I think it's a whole lot of fucking luck and uh, <laughs> come on and and honestly not knowing what we were doing and then training for something and figuring out hey maybe we can actually do this and then some more luck and some bets and some culmination of three years of kind yeah of like just hard work and going from yeah, exactly not knowing what to do how to play properly yeah getting pummeled. 5-1 in the first game we ever played against them to beating them 4-2 in the finals no. in a tournament. No shit. Yeah, this year yeah. or last year. Wait, Wait so, sorry, also, you guys are the founders. You guys are, all, you guys are on the team. Like, you guys, yep. like, you play and everything. And then, so, how did you, like, to even go back further, how did you build this team? Like, how did you guys even, like, <laughs> if you didn't you say you know how to play, like, like, both you guys play soccer. It's, it's, a, it's, right. it's an interesting uh, story. Let me, give you, let me give you the most ridiculous story you're ever going to hear that <laughs> turned into something even more ridiculous. We love like, ridiculous it's, stories. It's, 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 it's so, okay. Another so. Pals podcast live exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, you know, we get asked this question all the time. Um, and here is the truest of the true version. So, Andre and I were at Western together. Uh, we were playing uh, intramurals. We were playing, uh, and you know, we developed a, a good friendship. Started playing midfield together, whatever the case is. Graduated. Um, all of a sudden, Andre calls me three years ago, and he's like, "Hey, man, pack your bags. In three weeks, we're going to Italy, fully paid for. You're going to be a pro athlete. Uh, we're going to go play beach soccer." And I was like, "Great, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sign yeah. me up on a free trip, <laughs> free trip to Italy. Heck yeah, later, mom." And then, and then, and like then, a free trip to Thunder Bay. Never mind, Italy. He's going first. He's just on the first flight. And then he goes silent. And then he goes silent. And he we don't ghosted hear, you. He, he ghosted me. It, like nothing happens until I might have. <laughs> until like two weeks later, uh, I get called to go to a practice, and it's like a beach practice, and I meet like twelve other guys, um, guys from who played at Ryerson, like all sorts of different places. Um, and it's our first beach practice and we're going to Porto Sant'Elpidio in Italy in a week's time. So um wow. it's still ridiculous. We don't <laughs> where, believe Where did you guys have your first practice? Uh Bre at Cherry Beach? No, the Brampton Fairgrounds. So there's oh, okay. yeah, yeah, we yeah, found yeah, like yeah, a facility yeah. that actually does beach soccer. So they set up nets. Oh, okay. They had everything there. Well, because so it's not like a volleyball court you just got on no, to and like so, play it. Yeah. We got, proper. We, we got lucky. We got okay. lucky with it. And so, um, what up next? Um, okay, so no, I still don't believe it. No one believes it. Yeah. We actually, I'm just like, all right. <laughs> we're like, going to Italy in a week. We're like, great. And so, then, wait, and, sorry, also, <laughs> I, let me keep cutting you off. So, no, like, no, I'm just, no. this is so crazy. Like, so a free trip to Italy? <laughs> like, there was, like, you didn't book your tickets, nothing at this point? So, no, no. They so, saw zero tickets. We at saw, that point. we didn't see <laughs> any had tickets. Zero. This is a Ponzi scheme yeah, for sure. For, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And at the time, I'm working at Salesforce. So, it's not like I can just take off. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's, it's quarter end, like, all that nonsense, whatever the case is. And I'm like, kind of priming my my manager for like i might go to italy next i week. might be a professional athlete. <laughs> i might be I might a professional be athlete. athlete i might not be yeah. your manager's um, like what are you talking about man get back to work and and and, 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 and here's the thing it's just believable enough because andre and i are just good enough that it could maybe be believable <laughs> because it's beach soccer i, I did play soccer with andre so i'll say he's all right he's all maybe right maybe just believable enough um yeah. and so he comes to us like the wednesday we have a team meeting he hands out tickets and we're like okay like we're going to italy he hands out gear this is from the first year. I uh, get like all this gear sponsored by Anaria. Like it's just a dream. Yeah. Three days later, we show up at the airport, and Andre's dad is like the only words he says to me. He's a describe your dad for the for the for the pods. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't know how to describe him. But he's, <laughs> he's, I guess he's your typical Italian father. Serious, um, stern, yeah. stern, serious, stern, boss, but at the same mafia. time, super like sarcastic, Tony Soprano. <laughs> scary, yeah. like intimidating. Just like if you don't know fuck. him, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you don't Fair. know him, he's pretty intimidating. And okay, yeah. okay. And then, like <laughs> he comes up to me and he's like, "I hope you better know how to fucking play beach soccer." <laughs> and uh, I check in my bag, and then he's like, "I'll see you boys in Rome." And that's and twelve guys are just in an airport together, not knowing anything about 
anything. And that was how our, how our journey started three years ago into Canada Beach Soccer. Jesus. Our, yeah. First game <laughs> underneath the lights, the first game on TV, it's on uh, Sky, Sky Sports. Sports. Yeah. Wow. Um, Come on. Yeah. 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 Versus viewership. Italy. Uh, we actually, in the first like two minutes, we scored the first goal. Scored and we're like, goal. oh my God. Right, we got <laughs> this. Yeah. That's Heck exactly. Yeah. yeah. We're like, we got this. We can do it. And then five goals later, we're like, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, not, not happen. And the craziest thing about that is like, we're out there for the national anthem. It's like, well, there's probably like 6,000 people watching. We don't know how to play beach soccer. And the thing that, the thing that you get like, like letter to my younger self, like the thing is like beach soccer is way different. Like you got to flick and, and, and like control in the air and like move in yeah. like such a structure and like a different type of pace. And it's like, we didn't know any of that shit. And then we go out there, 6,000 people are watching Canada, Canadian national anthem. It's like we're pumped up, whatever. The Italian national anthem. Have you guys seen people sing the Italian oh, national yeah. anthem? <laughs> he's just he's so, having so, it. So, yeah. It's, I'll tell another story after, but continue. I, yeah. I can't wait to hear it. It's just like, that's the most intimidating thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so much passion and like fire in it. The story I was going to tell is me and Georgie went down to Chicago um, maybe back in November and we saw Chicago uh, Blackhawks play the Leafs. So the Canadian national, a good amount of Canadians there too. So Canadians are like, you know, Cheering, you know those quiet parts where at the ACC or Scotia Bank Arena, people would cheer like, "Ooh, like yeah." The whole American national anthem yeah. was just a party. Like we were loud for the Canadian national anthem. <laughs> yeah. The American national anthem comes on, and I was just like, "All right, sit down, little balls." Okay, yeah. okay I'm sitting down. You come. Yeah. You guys were like belting everything. Oh, they, you can tell that they won two world wars. That they're like fired yeah. up. Like this is our anthem. It's like insane. Mind you, it was like Veterans Day or something too. Yeah, I it think was, it was just nervous. But yeah, yeah, like I, you so know, I know what you mean, mean with the passion and everything. So I guess that leads us to like maybe another topic. Canada, we need some more passion. Celebrate some <laughs> more. Yeah. Shit, well, I, I guess the thing is though is like it's a little different, right? Like if there was probably Canadians there for like a big yeah. deal, like a national team, like the Olympics, Canadians, yeah, like yeah, they yeah. belt, right? Especially for like you hockey. Know, you know what I do gotta say is two years later we actually met a group of Canadians that we got out to the out to the games and they mm -hmm. were like they were very, very loud and very, very Yeah. And, and over the three years we actually turned the Italian crowd as well. So yeah. really? we started, yeah, we yeah. started getting cheers like from the Italians themselves, okay. Okay. even while we were playing them. Like it yeah. was actually, I guess everyone has some sort of relative that um, moved to emigrated that, to Canada. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So they all were saying like, oh, do you know this person or do you know that person? <laughs> we're like, good. you know my cousin I Tony on the North Bay? I just picture <laughs> <just, laughs> yeah. Like, or like, you know everybody. In Vancouver. Everywhere. That's, I'm Greek, like, so I get that a lot. Like yeah, I'll be yeah. in like some part of Greece, meet someone's like, oh yeah, I got a cousin in Montreal. I'm like, yeah, Montreal's pretty far <laughs> and it's pretty big. So I do not know George in Montreal. <laughs> Obviously his name's George. I just got a lot of George in my family. like cool running story. You know, like first the town's like, oh, it's cute. They came out there. They tried their artist now it's like they're cheering for you at the end yeah yeah so his his dad um so his dad so the, so the way the tournament like some context on the tournament so mm -hmm. it's um Italian beach soccer tour and what it is it's a tour over two months where you play in different cities and you get points allocated to like wins and things like that so it's like, like a league almost. yeah they get, you, get, get you to league. different cities and so we only went for two weeks and we went in the back half of the tournament and so when we lost to italy that that first year his dad went on tv and was like in three years we're gonna beat italy um, Sorry, and you're, wow. you're the coach, the team manager. He's, he's the president. Okay, got it. He's the president. He like founded. Wow, came out and gave like guarantee. Eh? Yeah, he yeah, came out. Came out and gave guarantee. Messier. This guy's definitely terrifying. Um, <laughs> and so, should have post a picture of his dad just in his own home country. Like, lost, yeah, we're gonna beat you guys soon. <laughs> lost some heartbreakers to like Switzerland and and like France and a bunch of bunch of teams, and just went home and we're just like fired up. So we tried to create this organization and this club and like just self-govern because there's no there's no governing body of Canada Beach soccer. And it's the amount of the reason why we started is the amount of interest that we actually got from people when we came back was just more than we ever expected. We just thought we were going to go over there, just kind of represent yeah, have Canada. Some fun. Yeah, have yeah. Some, exactly. Have some fun. It was more of like a fun trip at that point instead yeah. of like a really competitive trip. And then we got back and everyone was just starting like, oh, wh when are you guys practicing again? When are you... Uh, when are tryouts? Like, yeah, when are tryouts? Yeah, no When's shit. the next tournament? We're yeah. like, oh, maybe, maybe there's something here. And the, yeah. And the thing is, too, it's like beach soccer. Like, no one knows about it in, 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 in Canada. But, like, you go anywhere else in the world, it's like they're playing. Like, they have leagues. There's, yeah. like, Portugal just won the World Cup, like, pre-COVID and things like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, getting paid. Well, well like, yeah. even... So, my mom's Brazilian. Even, every time you go to Brazil, like, they all they do is play soccer on the beach. Yeah. Because they're half the countries. Most of the population, they're beach cities, right? Or not most, sorry. Good but amount, yeah, 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 yeah. So they play so much, and that's why they're so good, right? They play on the street, they play on the beach. Their footwork and their control is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of Brazil. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 uh, second year we went, we, uh, 
We ended up beating Brazil in one of the tournaments. No, it must. It was probably their second or third team. For Don't sure. be humble. Yeah. Uh, Don't it be was. I'm like, <laughs> so, so the, it was so a the, consolation so finals in these, in these tournaments. So in, the, in these tournaments, like the players who come out, like uh, so. For instance, like it's Italy's. Um, uh, it's like Italy's old Serie A players. So they have two yeah. teams. They have like their old Serie A, uh, A guys, like uh, Maurizio Gans, like who led the, the Serie Del Vecchio A. The brothers. Del Vecchio brothers. Um, like, yeah. um, and, like, and then they have a youth, like a younger team. That's those like, guys are playing. Like yeah. they play. Yeah. And that's the thing about beach. You can play till you're like, it's like kind of like squash, man. Like it's just like if you're nasty at positioning and, and like, footwork and, and control. Foot, it's because it's not it's, so much it, about speed anymore. Yeah. Right? It's also easy on the joints too. When yeah. you're on the sand, it's like a lot more fluid, low so impact, and everything. Exactly. So you can play, I guess, more into an older age. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we ended up winning some games that year. Beat Brazil for a consolation. That was like. Huge. Dude, victory like that doesn't taste so good. Like I can't yeah. say anything about what we did that night on camera, but <laughs> fuck, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone's we'll leave that one. I'm sure some ever, everyone can yeah. imagine. <laughs> so we went to bed. Yeah, straight to bed. You guys won, had some milk, went to bed. I slept in my jersey the night before, so we would win. So you know what? Superstitious okay, stuff okay, happened, okay, and like it works. Okay, I like <laughs> it. So. All of every year, it's in Italy. Like the league takes place. You guys fly over there, or does it, does it move around like different cities? Is it in Europe? How does? So this, I guess. Sorry, I guess even going back to the first year it was in Italy, and then like after you guys did, maybe I'm jumping all over the place. Oh, here. good question. Yeah, like it's good, good. it was the stat tournament was there. Have they all been there? And then like does it move there, around? So guess, there's so there's different like jurisdictions of of bodies that govern beach soccer. So like yeah. FIFA is obviously like the biggest Let me one. Say, talk a little bit more. There you go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Um, FIFA is obviously like the biggest one. Okay. Um, but in beach soccer, there's like one big one called beach soccer worldwide which okay. is like a governing federation which is fifa which is essentially fifa it's okay. their branch off uh, but then there's also like the italian beach soccer league there's also like the moroccan beach soccer league like there's a bunch oh, of different like professional leagues independent within their own country yeah. only okay so they okay. kind of they're self-regulated they do all their own things so would it be like mls syria like premier league stuff like that or a little different essentially right. but it's like more fragmented okay yeah it's more fragmented but now there's like a coming together so like what we did over the last three years we really tried to like build a brand and we didn't even know like there was other all these jurisdictions like we had no idea yeah um all of a sudden we start realizing that there's like so many teams like teams doing amazing things and then there's like some serious trailblazers so like in the states there's this guy i'm gonna just shout him out brian brian eastler um doing big things and shout so, out brian yeah, there you go <laughs> man really loves that. L- L- loves shout out, <laughs> you'll always give a double shout out <laughs> brian shout out brian uh, LA, uh, la beach soccer and he's pioneering some real stuff uh okay. bringing teams together and so <laughs> now um i'll let andre talk in a second because i'm on a fucking roll <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, he's had all the training for this so um, let him go uh, nothing wrong with that um, fuck where was I Andre go Brian, 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 Brian. Brian. okay yeah Brian and so, so there's tournaments in different leagues and so last year um, we won the uh, I guess the club world championship in it was in San Diego in San Diego okay uh, we so we won that, and then that got us invited to the Club World Cup in uh, what in Turkey. Yeah, World Championship, like World Club. I don't know. It's just the best clubs. Like you have your Napoli, you have your Levante, yeah. you have like a Flamenco. Wow, like Shit. Barca, professional yeah. arms of beach soccer teams that are actually in this, and that's going to be in October. Or supposed to be in supposed October. Be in October. And is a, that the one that was supposed Turkey. to happen? Is that the one that happened that was postponed, or no? It's completely different. Um, so. We're, we were act, we were actually supposed to be in Italy right now. Okay. Um, and the Italia Beach Soccer is kind of where we got our start um, yeah. because of the fact that my dad's actually good friends with the person who started. So the opportunity just kind of okay. came from him. And then, like I said, the interest is what made us continue. Yeah. And then gets garnering sponsorships that allowed us to travel and kind of putting in work to build the brand, to get the sponsorships, to get the players and all that. Yeah. It is kind of what we did with Italy, but... We kind of wanted to expand. So by going to the World uh, Club Championship in San Diego and winning that got us the invite to the other one. Okay. And now because of that, we've been talking to them and we've been invited to a bunch of other tournaments. Just, and yeah, just, it's, is, just, it's just the thing is, it's like we're not funded by anybody. Yeah. Right. And so uh, essentially what we did was, um, and this is why it's so amazing and, and ridiculous, is like we had this club and we turned it into um like we incorporated it we turned it into an organization um and we just tried to grow it through like partnerships so foundation physio do me g- give me a shout out to foundation foundation physio, physio. <laughs> Huge plug. you guys are awesome get us to foundation um maddie 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 saved our life so maddie saved their lives let's go maddie <laughs> 
Best Fizzy okay. Owned Town. Best Fizzy Owned Town. Get there. Get there. Where is it uh, located? Multiple yeah. locations. Um, Front Street uh, and Bathurst. No, Front, Front Street and Spadina. Front and Spadina. Spadina. Man, don't kill me. Oh, Front I know Spadina. exactly. Beside yeah. the subway. Yeah. 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 I know exactly. They're right. awesome. They they take care of like so many like great athletes. Like, um, but anyways, they and signed the guys who beat Italy and Brazil. But but that's the thing. We didn't realize <laughs> we didn't realize how much we needed nutrition and to like act like a professional club. Like we had to actually be a professional club in the yeah. sense of like, okay, we need a physio now. And Maddie came in the first year. They came on a sponsorship. They gave us um, like physio for every player once a week, a month. Um, and then when it, Maddie came to a, came to Italy with us and took care of us, man, nutrition, like everything, everything. He was like, we joke around. We're like, he's our physio, doctor, photographer, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. nutritionist. Like, yeah. And then from there, we started to get amazing partnerships, man. Like West Island Co. Um, a men's shout out. West <laughs> Island Co. You already know. <laughs> Like Mc, like circle. McDonald's, like <laughs> oh man, we started to get so many cool partnerships. McDonald's? Yeah, we got an, oh, we got a franchise right. McDonald's. Uh, Goose though. Chase. Um, shout out McDonald's. Goose, that's Goose my shout. I get that one. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like my McDonald's. Goose Chase is an amazing, company. but like we started Goose, to get what's Goose Chase. Uh, Goose Chase is actually my brother's uh, company. It's a, a cloud-based scavenger hunt app. Check wow. it out. Yeah, it's Sick. good team building stuff. It's wicked. Very cool. Um, shout out Goose, Goose Chase. Chase. Goose Chase. Goose Chase. Love that. Um, but that's the cool thing. It's just like all of a sudden, Andre, myself, and Lucas, and you know a few other guys, Naeem, Christian, Alex, we found ourselves with this like thing that we had to build and take advantage of, and like in between our day jobs and like figuring it out, and just like just like you guys, man, like yeah. you know what I mean, like, and that's why we admire this so much because it's yeah, like yeah. we were talking about this on the way here. It's just like the stories that get you here are just so funny. Yeah. <laughs> like like the one true. you just told us, right? Yeah. And so yeah. Um, it's just it's just crazy to see that, you know, now we got these partnerships. And then the third year we go back, we got Paolo, um, yeah. our, our technical director. Coach Paolo Ciccarelli uh, played for Montreal Impact. Coach, uh, or assistant coach, goalie coach of the national Canadian national team. Oh, wow. uh, assistant yeah. coach of arena national team. So like wow. really well-versed in soccer yeah. and he, came out when did when did he come on board uh year last ago. year when we year won. ago yeah, yeah. So you guys want want these okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. he brought <laughs> huge he brought discipline yeah. like huge we got uh, it was without him we wouldn't have we won. attracted yeah. a couple a couple great players too that like helped us change the best part was um like we go there and we'd seen this switzer the swiss team constantly and they'd beat us like just constantly and then and then we'd like party with them and hang out with them like that's just the like yeah, you know what yeah. i mean like when all the stuff's done and it's just like your last night's there or whatever um, you really get to meet these guys, anyways. But on the pitch, it's like you you fucking hate them. Yeah, right? yeah, of course. Um, and then our first game there, we were like so prepared with Paulo. Felt so good. We beat them eight three, and it's like they come up to us and they're like, "It's you know, I was telling my guys, it's because you guys were more prepared." And it's like that's crazy to think that like a Switzerland team is telling like a Canadian team. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in soccer. Uh, like, it's just soccer. Like, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. More prepared. In, yeah. in soccer. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of, I guess like now, because everything you said so far, it's like at the beginning, you guys kind of just like put one foot in front of the other and just started going with it yeah. and see what the, what the hell happens. It was just like, and, I, and now it's kind of like, you kind of have it a bit figured out and you're getting more, like it's more legitimate. It's not just guys handing out plane tickets right before yeah. they fly. <laughs> like now you're, I guess, would you say like now you're more in line with like a professional organization yeah. where it's like, you're getting a little more recognition notoriety on the, on the, the world scale, if you will. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's exactly kind of, that's perfect way to put it. Yeah. Um, and it took us three years to actually, get there and get the recognition that we could but like for example we have players coming out for example adrian can uh tfc legend played from 2010 to 2012 was the captain got mvp best defensive player so oh, wow. he started coming out um guys who played on the national team and arena soccer and futsal started coming out uh today we kind of like during the covid we no practice no nothing but once they Sub allowed for uh 10 people we started going to Woodbine Beach, Woodbine Beach every once in a while and yeah. practice. And like today, for Dwayne De Rosario came out and yeah. was practicing with us. Wow. Sick. So, sick, yeah. from your point, the recognition and being like a real professional club is attracting all these people, and it's pretty awesome to see what actually yeah. the end result, or not even the end result, but like result. where you've come yeah. to is just short. I think you guys like. I don't know beach soccer. I don't know how long it's to build an organization, but three years seems like a very short time. I'll tell you the first three years I watched TFC, they sucked. Yeah. <laughs> like they were not good. They, I love TFC. Yeah, They're man. like my team. Shout out Jonathan like, Azario. Azario <laughs> represent. Uh, no, Probably but what I'm saying is like, I remember watching them the first game and I'm like, I'm, I swear I've seen like, like Syria D better yeah. soccer than this. The first couple, yeah. I feel like it took a long time to get that reputation. Cause like, 
it's like building a company, doing anything. Your first three years, like it's like you're kind of figuring out how to walk, not it's been, run. It's been challenging, man. Like it's been int- like it's like for all the good, it's just like also like six guys, four guys, three guys that we built a board of directors, like um, brought people in. It's like definitely growing pains because you're growing with your friends, you're trying to build a club and a business. Yeah, and like those two things when they mix, it's crazy. Like, yeah, and that like it's it's, it's wild. really tough to keep it separate. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, not be like not hurt feelings. It, like it, yeah. exactly, and you're always trying to think about what's best for the business, but at the same time, what's it's best for the is, club. Is this going? Yeah, what's best for the club, and is, and is this going to hurt my friendship with the this person? Yeah, because. Yeah, so, like, so, yeah. We're so all kind of best friends, and, and where he started. And so that's what puts Andre uh, Lucas, obviously, and I in like an interesting, <laughs> unique position. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Um, Did you ever have to cut one of your best friends? Um, not, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> Might have bleeped that one. I like. <laughs> Look, looking, looking at you. <laughs> that's a good one. Um, I wanted to ask. So. I know many Olympic sports are, are government funded or government, not sorry, not government funded, but they're funded by the big corporations, you know, <clears throat> Canadian Tire, yeah. um, Bell or Rogers or whatever. What does it, well, one, I guess first part, have you guys tried to get that into that funding circle or what is it in second part? What does it take to get into that? Because I know they, for Olympic sports, it's, it's kind of almost a given. That a lot of their athletes get that that funding, but I don't think beach soccer is an Olympic sport, is it? No. Well, I, I don't know if it's an Olympic sport, but no, it's not. Okay, but but for the funding uh, side of things, I think it's I think it's interesting because I think it plays into there's no local presence, right? And so if there's no local presence, like there's only a certain amount of ROI, like a lot of these brands or these sponsors can get overseas in Italy. Um, you know, we got we 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 raised a good amount, like sixty, seventy K, right? Wow, so no, it is and, and, it, wow. and it's a grind. Like um and that sixty seven K probably takes you guys a long way. To I mean, yeah, knocking but, on doors, calling yeah, businesses, yeah, like, yeah. All of like that. it's 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 a grind, right? It's a team <laughs> grind and then like that's also some of the challenges we faced, right? Because you know, we had to make the distinction between is this like a professional club or is or is it just like a club that you come play in and like everyone's you know part of and like doesn't have roles and things like that. You know what I mean? So we actually yeah. had to create like an like an org structure, yeah, um, define roles and things like that. Um, but it's 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 been challenging. But I think as soon as we start to get a local presence and like a local audience, and that's really what we're working towards, like a a, a good tournament because now we're gaining a pedigree that like international teams want to come play with us yeah. um they're seeing us on instagram they know our brand like we're you know we're doing some good things we have some good content partners shout out to reach agency and a few other guys few other you guys. already know <laughs> shout out to who? Reach, reach agency reach agency <laughs> <laughs> the easiest name so far <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. you're too excited uh, for the shout out <laughs> oh shout out i kind of want to just yeah that's a <laughs> <laughs> you like an air horn for all the shout outs we should get an air horn um but i i think that's what it is right it's like it's like getting a local feel getting the Getting the interest rate up. Um, we did a youth camp, um, which was really, really well received. Um, we had a lot with of Kleinberg, youth, yeah, with Kleinberg. Oh, Kleinberg okay. Yeah, yeah. And Kleinberg came out. We had uh, uh, boys and girls of all ages. We ran um, drills in the morning and like touted it as, as, you know, this is a good way to uh, enhance your skills. And mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like dry land training for hockey yeah. players, whatever the case, right? Um, and so we're trying to do a lot of those things. But I think it's, you know, and, and I'm sure you have more to add here, but I think it's like we, we just need a better local like presence, presence yeah. like we just need something here yeah yeah and isn't that what you guys were were doing Aren't you guys planning it if i'm correct if i'm wrong planning a tournament this year or mm-hmm. something like that yeah so there was going to be a tournament around uh windsor leamington and they were kind of asking us for help and asking us to be a part of it okay so that was going to be our first step in actually doing something here but our goal is to host tournaments here yeah and whether it's uh woodbine beach or niagara falls or cherry beach wherever it yeah, may yeah. be our goal is to do that because it's like beach soccer is yeah it's a sport but at the same time it's also kind of a lifestyle yeah so when you host an event like that um if we bring this back to italy they have like all these vendors out there they have yeah. beer they have food they have all these different types of things that people just stay and they party all night type yeah, deal yeah. And during the day. So it's like, that's kind of what we want to bring over here. So it's, uh, and that's what my next question was, like what kind of work goes into putting one of these together? Like, I mean, you guys now, you know, you're learning what it takes to build a league and a company and all of this stuff. Like, what does it take to run a tournament? Is it that now like you're, 
is it easier to get partners? Uh, like, do you have to secure like permits that do you put it on the beach? And like, how does that work? Do you, like, is there a lot more that goes into this? And is you think it's tougher to do than it was to do what you've done so far? D- d- yeah, man. I think I think I think I think it's twofold. I think absolutely, but also like if we you know pre COVID, if we'd buckled down and things like that, like we were trying, like we had a board meeting, like a four hour strategy session, like all that sort of stuff, where our yeah. board came in and. And, and we're getting advice from the right people. But I think it's it's twofold in the sense of like, first, like, shout out to Windsor, but like, I don't really want to play a tournament in Windsor. <laughs> I want to play a tournament in Toronto. So uh, no shout out. Sorry, Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Windsor, but I want to play a tournament yeah. in Toronto. Well, um, bigger, there's more people yeah. here. There's like, like TFC's base that here's the fan base. And the, the pool you can pull from is probably bigger. Ex- exactly. We want to also use that as an opportunity to scout great talent, right? Like, there's so many like double whammies and like get sponsors and things like that. But I think it's, um, it's a lot of you know. It's a lot of red tape. So luckily, Andre's dad is pretty well connected in, in, in Vaughn and in Niagara Falls and a few different places. But I, I really do think it's like got to get the counselor's ear yeah. first. You got to get the zoning permits. Like there's so mm-hmm. many things to think about, especially if like sponsors come on and it's like beer. It's like then you got like liquor laws and like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know I'm sure we have some cannabis brands there as well. Yeah, there's so, so much red yeah, tape. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. But I mean, per, like I'm not just saying it because like you know I, I know you guys and like to me. The way you described it, like in Italy, like if it was on a beach and you're sitting in the stands, just like drinking all day, watching beautiful. soccer. I'm telling you, like that's something I'd spend a day hanging out and just watch soccer. It's like beautiful, because man. it's not like you're watching like guys playing pickup, like you said, as like a hobby. It's you're watching professional athletes play soccer. So I think like, I mean, I don't know what the market for it is. I'm not as like well versed in soccer and running tournaments, but, but that seems like like peak summer to sit outside in the sun and drink and be on a beach. Like who wouldn't want to do it? Yeah, big time. exactly. Yeah. And also beach soccer is pretty exciting have you, like yeah some of the things it's, it's very acrobatic so it's like a lot of bicycle kicks side volleys a, yeah, a lot of that, that a lot of shots i was watching yeah. i was looking through the instagram earlier and it's like all basically a lot of in the air ball movement yeah, yeah it's like a lot of lobs a lot of like volleys so bicycle well, exactly what you said well, bicycle yeah, kicks i was gonna say it kind of takes away like a lot of canadians don't really like soccer as much unless you have some sort of immigrant background and you came from parents or grandparents yeah, that yeah. are a country that is well first in it um but it kind of takes away all the boring stuff of the passing like back and forth yeah and send it back the goalie like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. usually just pass shoot or pass bike or yeah all these different things that is pretty exciting for someone to watch okay okay that go ahead no i was gonna ask how many people on the field is it six on six? Four, no, four, four and goalie, so five, five, five. Four, yeah, four yeah. and okay. There's different rules too. So in the sense of, um, you know, you can, um, you have one pass back to the goalie where you can pick it up. Okay. Um, and then you can't do it per, per that possession again. Kind of okay. Thing. It's, uh, we played 12 minute, 12 minute thirds. Um, and it's, it's, it's wild because it's like, oh, anytime there's a foul, depending on if it's um, in their half or in your half um, or the other half, like you have to, you know, either get behind the ball or make a cone kind of thing. Basically a free shot on that. It's a penalty yeah. shot Yeah, it's from PK. wherever the foul PK. takes place. It's a shot from there. Cause the sand's so unpredictable. So like what the real pros will do is like they'll top spin it down, hit the sand so that the goalie has no idea where it's going to go. And those are impossible to save. Um, which is ridiculous. I know. That sounds crazy. I was top just saying, spin it down. How do you fucking now. top spin a ball? The, the other thing that's wild is like if you're playing in Italy at like 40 degree weather and you're standing on like maybe waiting for the national anthem or whatever. And it's it's cool because like the kids come out with you and like they're holding your hand. But like the sand yeah, yeah. is you burning your in your there. feet. Yeah. You can't stand, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They, they had to water the sand yeah. uh, every beginning of every third because it was so hot. We honestly were playing in like 44 degree weather at one point. That's crazy. Oh, I tell you, like I'm not a pro athlete, but I like when I go to Greece in the summers, like I will not stand in the sand. Like it's the same thing. In Greece, it can get up to as high as fifty, and like if you're barefoot in that sand, your feet are getting cooked. Dead. Like you know, it's bad. Like even if you want to go play beach volleyball, like they have hoses on each corner, like just like a recreational net they leave at the beach, and like the hose is constantly running. And there's like little kids like spraying and stuff because like yeah, I can't even imagine like running in that for like well thirty six minutes. I guess like yeah. your feet must be cooked after. I guess you you kind of forget about it. So and it, moving, it also yeah, makes it, it also it. makes you move more and being stationary because it hurts so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you, like you kind of want to keep moving and then yeah. you just see. I would just like I do the thing where the beach. I just dig my feet in. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I probably play yeah. goalie and just like dig my feet and stand there and just like that. I'm good here. Classic Georgie. <laughs> I'd be an alright goalie. I think it's just because you're thick. Yeah, exactly. I think I'm a lot of net space. <laughs> so let's 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 get the viewers hyped up for the fans, the viewers. 
What's been the biggest highlight, like goal you score? I mean, besides the win, like goal, was it like a last second for the win? There's some crazy bicycle kick. Like we're going to tag one of them in our, in our, uh, in the bio. So like, what's, what's one that's like super, super hype that people are like, shit, I got to watch more of this. I think the best one is from our player, Mark Yankovic. Um, he's like six, seven, huge man. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did a bike from like almost half His yeah. ribs and just came, top, touched it. Top corner. Yeah, he just came, he came, yeah. collected it. You guys will see, he came, collected it, like did a couple keep ups, like crushed it up, and then all of a sudden just bang, like top cheese. Like, Come on. <laughs> ball moves so fast, you can you can barely see it in the actual video. Really? Yeah, wow. you can see the shadow go, but you can't see the ball, the ball. until it like that, six, the next seven. Man, I was twerking on that shot. Yeah, it's 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 wild. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That is pretty sick. I, can't, the ball, I the, can't even do a bicycle kick. Is the ball you play the same size, smaller, bigger? Like Same size. Same, okay. um, so in the Italia Beach soccer tool, it's kind of. Uh, a mixture between a soccer and a volleyball. Okay. Um, more on the soccer ball side, so it's a, still a little bit lighter, but, but different skin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that but like in the like, like worldwide beach soccer, it's just kind of a regular soccer ball. Oh, so it changes by by it, different leagues. Yeah, it depends on who's running it. Okay. What's the standard size of the pitch or the sand? Oh, I feel like uh, we should know that. Thir- <laughs> Thirty-seven meters long <laughs> by 25 wide i don't even know if he's lying or not i have no idea is that, that, is that right so accurately this yeah. well 30 seconds <laughs> so okay jamie is it like look, jamie a- look this up <laughs> well, ain't Joe Rogan, but <laughs> well we are gonna have a producer soon that can look up some of these things so that is coming for the listeners we're getting a producer soon oh, what do you say hold on 37 by 25 30, yeah 37 by 28, you're wrong. Nice. Uh, oh, I lied. 26, 20. Uh, 35 to 37 by 26, 28. So let's see the size of it. So it's like what, half a soccer field, like a normal soccer field? Or it's like it, a volleyball it's, court. It's size. kind of like an indoor soccer pitch. Yeah. Just like a, a regular indoor soccer That's pitch. Bigger nets, though. But it's like like one like Sick. one run down the line. And like, if you don't get that ball, like you're oh, gassed. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> you're oh, done. that's the other thing, too. You're saying about like training and everything like that. Like, and you're talking about bringing like players who can last longer and play mm. that keep their careers going. But I guess the difference is with this is it's hard, a lot harder on a yeah. sand. Like, is it short shifts and you're changing? Is it yeah. like changing the fly? Like, how does that work? Because I'm sure you can't. Do you guys run 12 minutes straight? No, like, no. No, 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 yeah. There's no way anyone can do yeah. that. Honestly. It, it, yeah. it, the, the good thing is for like anyone who's who's coming into beach or whatever the case is, and then going back to actual soccer, like the explosiveness that you get is wild. Yeah. Um, you feel way lighter when you're off the sand. Like it feels like you can jump. No, it's like 10 feet higher. Okay. <laughs> um, I was just gonna say, when you say this, I think about in terms of hockey, there's roller hockey, like inline, inline hockey. And that's the one sport a lot of hockey players played in the summer to work on their control, work on their footwork. And it's a completely different style of hockey too. It's all about possession rather than, you know, in ice hockey, you go down there two on one, you shoot every time. And roller hockey, it's like, okay, if you don't have a really good opportunity, just curl back in possession, right? So when you say in, in line, same thing, there's not an Olympic sport. I know there's probably a Canadian inline team organization, but there's these other sports like beach soccer and inline hockey where the development skills that you learn playing those sports make you that much of a better athlete, yeah. not just in that sport and every other sport too, because those, those kind of other characteristics that you're developing. So for example, beach soccer, running in the sand. If you're a sprinter, like most sprinters practice in the stand, I'm, I'm assuming. A lot of football players. You're, you're, a lot of, you're yeah. correct. Yeah. A, lot, a, lot of, a lot of soccer players like Messi, Ronaldo, they all post videos of in them the sand, training right? in because the sand. Because it's so yeah. much harder. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you don't think about that, but as a parent, you want your kid to be the best possible, let's say soccer player. It's like, why not, you know, put them in the sand, train them to play beach soccer. So their control, their footwork, their acrobatics, I guess. I couldn't agree say, more. Would get yeah. so really much well better. Said, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, I've been thinking about this so much. And I like that you gave the shout out to the parents because I, I guess we're getting to, into that yeah. age now, right? Shout out to the parents. Right? <laughs> Yo, we got <laughs> to actually, age actually know what? We do have right? a lot of moms out listening. Yeah, shout that's, out that's, to all that's, the moms. That's, that's awesome, our moms. though. <laughs> like the more, I mean, just on that general topic, the more you can get your kids to do, the better well-rounded they're going to be. And to be an athlete, honestly, is a, is, a, is an advantage in life. Yeah. It absolutely is. It, it it works. It helps you in sales and problem solving and like Every everything. Every teamwork. Everything. Like everything. Everything. Honestly, everything. Honestly, everything. Well, yeah. if you think about it, and maybe this is going to, I'm going to be completely off of this. A lot of professional athletes didn't just play that one sport. You yeah. think of John Tavares, for example. He was the lacrosse. best lacrosse player in basically Canada for his age or even in North America. Yeah. You look at all the football quarterbacks that are also got drafted to the MLB. You think about some of these basketball players that also played football, football and high yeah. baseball. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's so many athletes that don't just play one sport. I think some parents get so consumed with 
uh, I'm just going to use hockey because that's the sport I play. There's so many parents that's like, okay, my son's got to play hockey in the winter and in the summer he's got to play summer hockey and then he's got to do dry line yeah. training for hockey. It's like, hey, there's more sports. Like maybe put him in inline hockey. Maybe put him in soccer, baseball, work on his hand. Golf, hand, lacrosse, golf. baseball, yeah. yeah. There's so many other sports yeah, that will help tennis, you develop. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, there's, there's so many so cross disciplinary talents too. Like, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I was, just gonna, yeah. I was just going to say that so many other sports will help you get better at that one sport because yeah. if you keep kind of, uh, I'm going to script this quote too, uh, beating a dead horse. Think, beating a dead horse? That the, if you keep beating the dead horse, yeah, your son might be able to turn out to be a superstar. It might make it to the NHL or to MLS or wherever. But if you, I don't play, know if that quote applies. <laughs> that, that thing. No, I, I think I, I think, I, horse no, I think it means I think, that they. I think he might also imply that they, might, really be, bad they might be getting <laughs> fatigued at that one sport too, and not having any. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. If you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, yeah, yeah, of course, it'll work. You're, you're so going to get better. But maybe if you try something else, you might get marginally better or like noticeably better. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, and you might enjoy it. That much more yeah. too, yeah. but yeah, every sport's got different things, right? Like the way you're working in beach soccer versus regular soccer versus even indoor soccer. Like there's it's different futsal. Yeah, yeah futsal. Different, yeah, I played futsal. The futsal's off the boards and everything, right? No, 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 no that's no. arena that's soccer. Arena footy, so I played yeah. that one summer. That's Holy tactic. shit! I don't know if I can it's play hard. That. I played really Scarborough hard, yeah. at um, clearly, yeah, yeah clearly. Yeah, yeah. So I play like. I'm I'm not very good. I did play. I did play in a real. Not that bad. Not that bad. You're not that bad. Help my own. I'm good at the indoor, not running so far. Outdoor, I'm gone. Yeah, it's done. Um, and I don't know where I'm going at this point, but I played clearly. <laughs> I, I was going to say how hard arena soccer is. I played clearly. It's so hard. And like how guys play off the boards and like the contact and had time. It, it's insane. Yeah. But the thing is, you learn so many different skills that translate. I mean, like I'm not a pro. I'm not playing every game to learn. I'm playing men's league. But like what I learned playing there versus what I played indoor at the hangar and like different things. Like you learn, okay, like I can do this here. This translates to this. So like I'm like to your point too, when you're young playing different sports, you can pull different things from different, different avenues, right? So you should like limit yourself i guess so i guess for you guys too like the amount of you learn from explosiveness or even control like that's cool. like if you look at guys who make it in europe or, or brazil whatever like they're playing with like little balls on the street yeah, that that teach you, you know the yeah. possession maybe that's where we lack and that's where people should go more into to expand right so uh, yeah man i think with like and i'm just gonna go ahead and quickly say it, i think with youth like like people really screwing up youth soccer in canada right now i mean youth soccer doesn't even keep score like up until mm. a certain point, and I got a real. Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, I got a real they got, problem. They got with rid that. of it. So yeah. yeah, everyone gets a medal for winning now. You can't. You got to yeah, learn to lose ribbons and for learn. everybody. You got to know what it is to go win off, Ricky. <laughs> Shout out to Rick. <laughs> Hit him. Okay, don't get me wrong. I know where this is going for sure. This is a rant, and you know, <laughs> the people look listen, straight at the camera. And let them know so, how it is. <laughs> I agree that when you're young, there shouldn't be winners and losers because you want the, the point of playing a sport is to have fun, make friends, yada, yada. But in life, in reality, there are winners and there are losers. Yeah. That is how the world works. Mm -hmm. If you try and sugarcoat it for a seven to 10 year old, that there's no winners and losers and everybody's equal, your, your son or daughter might re like take that as he or she grows up and it's like that's not how they should be taught they should be taught that you try your hardest sometimes even your best might not be good enough but that's why you work to get better so that you can win sometimes you're going to win and you're not going to play your best but it doesn't matter because you won the idea is that you got to keep going so that you can keep winning winning and winning and you know what never stop trying to win because no matter what there's always going to be someone better than you even if you think you're the best and there are a select few people in the world that are the very best at what they do until you are that person you are not winning. So you got to keep battling and those little victories and keep going and going and going so you can get better because the whole point of life is to get better. And if you don't, if you don't know what's winning and what's losing, how do you know if you're getting better? End rant. I'm done. That's a great oh. rant, actually. Well I, that sorry, last I, point, I that, that last yeah, one, yeah, actually, that. you nailed it with, that's actually how do you know you're getting better? How do you know you're getting better? Because at the end of the There's day, no you should winners strive winners to get better. Yeah. No, I, I totally the, the agree. The point of life is to get <laughs> yeah. better. In my, in my so opinion, sorry. Like, again, love, make money, have a family, all these other things. Yeah, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, buddy. The idea is that you want to get better. Hashtag only W's. That's it. Only that's it. Only that's W's, it. baby. But <laughs> shout out. Shout Sorry out for the rant, rant, everybody. No. That's it. But to your point, like that's what's kind of wrong with you. So I, I agree as well. Like at the end of the day, I actually can think back to a point where like I took a major L in soccer <laughs> and why I actually quit soccer, but I also was more successful playing baseball. Yeah. Um, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to tell the story because I was so Hit us with the I thought I was. Okay. So I played, uh, I went to select and played like rep, whatever the first level rep back in the day was. So I was okay. I was a striker. I was good at shooting, terrible at running. So I just like stay up. I know how to, I was okay. Um, and the coach's son put the same position as me. 
So you started playing more. <laughs> at the time, at the time, I started getting a little upset and getting sad. I was like early teen years. And I thought it was because, oh, it's the coach's son. He's better. All right, he's, he gets favoritism. I'm better than him, whatever. So like I started getting on, put on the bench more and like I would miss out on the wins and I wouldn't play as much. So I thought that was me like, this is not fair, whatever. But then I also didn't, th- like at that time, I wasn't looking back that like the coaches, the coach ran um, optional offseason tryouts in indoor and I thought they were optional. So I didn't go to all of them. I missed a lot where the coach's son was there obviously every day. So at the time I'm saying, oh, he's playing more because he's is his son so he gets by default to win but then years later when i looked back and i pivoted from soccer because i got discouraged of soccer i pivoted to baseball i was like you know what maybe i'm wrong like i was i was playing like quote unquote a loser if you will like i was making excuses i said that the coach's son is getting favoritism but he was there every saturday morning 7 a.m when i was sleeping because it was optional he was there playing so even though it's not directly about like the, the constantly you know the the ribbons and the winning and losing yeah. the score like Taking that L as a kid, I was young. I was like 12 years old. I was like, I would cry because I wasn't playing. Yeah. Seeing that, I was like, shit, like now I'm playing this sport. I want to be good at baseball. Those optional tryouts, I'm going, the optional practice, I'm going first thing in the morning. <laughs> if it's a winner and a loser, like I'm getting out there first, I'm going to try. And if I lose, I'm going to say, why did I lose? How do I get better? If you don't know who the loser is, you're not going to get better and become a winner. And at the end of the day, it's unfortunate because it, you know, some <laughs> kids get their feelings hurt. But like, again, to Ricky's point, if so, like someone will always win. And if you're going to be coddled, at a young age, the world is a doggy dog world. No matter what you do, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, man, but look what you guys are doing. You threw yourself into a tournament, and you're probably like, "Yeah, we got this." And you yeah, guys exactly. got like smacked around. And then from that, what did you learn? You build an organization over three years that's now on on the world stage. Well, if it was about handing out medals, saying, "Oh, good job, come back <laughs> next year," are you gonna yeah, go and put the time and effort and chase people down for sponsorships? Then also, like, think about the nutrition side, the physio side. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. go and do all this? No, you're gonna say, "I'm having fun." Cool. Yeah. I think we're all on the same page. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 we, that we are really all well on the same page. Yeah. One I more thing I wanted to add to on, on winning and losing. If you lose and you give your absolute best and you tried your hardest, you're not a loser. Like you're, it's that constant battle within yourself. If like there's times where I've literally, I did a triathlon. I'm not sure if you guys might have heard the past podcast. So I did one and I trained for about two months. And I'm not like a swim, like I swam in high school, but I hadn't swam much. I'm not a runner and I just bought a bicycle for this triathlon. And I trained my absolute ass off. I finished in like 200th or something, 300th. I didn't even care. I crossed the finish line. I was bawling. So I was so happy. I was like, I just did this. I didn't win. And I knew I lost. But I had that like personal victory. Yeah. And that's all that matters. Like I knew that I gave it 110%. And I know I lost. And I know there's room for improvements. But I was so happy with my personal performance that I came out a winner. So it's like, there's always, again, there's always winners and losers in life, but it's how you look at how you take those defeats and how you take those losses. And there's that Michael Jordan quote that I did once and I butchered it. I don't know what, oh, he's clear to throw it. I thought you were going to nail it. So it's something like, I I was trusted trusted with the game when he shot 27 times and I missed. And that's why I'm who I am or something. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah, yeah. like that. I'm oh, sorry. To add to your point, one thing that, that as well. So Ricky, he's, he's underplaying sweating. it. The guy swam like off, so like he's a good swimmer. Yeah. But you said like he almost fought, like almost drowned swimming. Literally yeah, almost because drowned. Because it's, it's open water. Shit. Yeah. That's water. Shit. I had a couple cramps. I just, I, I literally I, almost drowned. I wanted mad, to quit. Mad, so, mad respect because I saw my brother uh, train for that and for the Puerto Rico one. Bro, well done. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's it's not crazy. Easy. It's I've done, crazy. I've trained for half marathon. I'm like, training for a marathon. I went to I went to watch. <laughs> yeah, the swimming, I guess, swimming freaks me out. But to your point too, like even though you're happy you accomplished it, didn't you come out and say, you know what? Like, not you bought a triathlon bike, and they're like, man, I probably should have practiced my swimming more. So you've been practicing your swimming yeah. now. So like, even from There's that, you just wanted to improvement. finish. But from there, you're like, you know what? Ah, maybe I can do better next time. Yeah. So and then you work is, hard. Yeah. yeah. That's like learning from your losses or learning from your defeats is also yeah. one of the most important things you can do yeah. because then you're yeah. never actually growing if you yeah. continue to go, win. Go f- go try and lose more. Honestly, like that that's that's what I'd say. Like hundred percent. Go try and you, take L's so you can go get W. And <laughs> every loss. I mean, you worked at. I mean, I don't know what you did at Salesforce if you're on the sales side, but yeah. like every every loss every no you get gets you one cl- closer to that yes or that win or whatever and like honestly you should be going out like, to your point go and look for ways to lose go yeah because the more you lose the more you're gonna find ways to win oh i didn't do this well this well if you keep going i think you're gonna win no fucking chance like, be perfect. like you think messi yeah. wins every game he plays always because yeah. ronaldo ronaldo how many shall greece 2004 <laughs> <laughs> i bet you ronaldo learned a lot from that one <laughs> as you know it's crazy today is the day I they saw, won i know i saw it i actually just saw today's the day, posted. Today the day oh four i was wow that was oh man that's 16 years ago yeah oh my god crazy i was crazy. so happy Greece when they shocked the world 
you know what's crazy? My cousin's half with Greek, you on half that Portuguese. One. Yeah. And I know that even though Greece won there, how happy, did Greece win that tournament? Man? I got no fucking idea. <laughs> it was just idea. a year of luck. They were probably like but it's crazy. If you actually, won. Oh, they were like, it's basically like Leicester City winning pretty much. They were like, you put a thousand bucks on them, like you're getting paid. Yeah, you're getting paid. But that's crazy to go through a whole tournament like that and still like, okay, it's good. It, like the defense strategy, score one goal and, and play a trap. Like the whole thing works for like a couple. Park the bus. But then you're playing France. And you're playing like Portugal again when Ronaldo was like, maybe not the peak of his career, but he was like the best young player in the world at the time. So, so when he had that, other, they had that other really good striker, Figo. 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 Luis Figo was yeah. not young. He was old. He no, was, the he was still sick. He was sick, Fresno. but he was yeah. old. He was like near the end of his career. He was also a midfielder. Yeah. 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 Seven yeah. mid, yeah. Sick. He's but, my favorite uh, player, Luis Figo. Yeah. Kind of yeah. reminds me of um, a little bit of Canada Beach soccer. Going yeah. Going. <laughs> actually, <laughs> funny. <laughs> funny. I was actually going to put it back before we changed on to this. I was going to ask, talking about like the loss of the wins. What's one of the biggest things you guys have learned from like either your first loss or one, like what was one big challenge that you guys had on the road that was either like, fuck, maybe we should give up on this or maybe we should quit. And what's like a big lesson? Can you give us one from the business perspective and then from the actual playing perspective. Take take whatever one you want. And take your time too if you guys got to think about this. I'll go, I'll go, there was, there was one in my head that was like, that's like, I think about a lot. Yeah. Um so in uh, it, this is just from the club perspective in um, third year, and then we play this first tournament in Marata, I think it was Marata, uh, Marata, Marata in Marata, Italy. Marata, yeah, it, it's all southern the, uh, east coast, yeah, okay. in the Adriatic. Um, so we play in this small town, beautiful. Play there for like a couple days. We win this tournament. We beat Italy in in PKs. Um, that was the tournament, and you know, and we were feeling hype. It's like, okay, we came here to beat Italy. So we go to the next town. We play in this tournament, Porto Santo Pedio, which is like. It was their 25th anniversary of the it being in that town, and that town goes ape shit for Sick. beach soccer. Like that town loves it. Um, get so many people come out, um, and it's like we're in the finals again because there are many tournaments against Italy, and it's like we just didn't. I could just tell because Andre and I co-captained last year. I know it's it's like we're founders, we're players, we're co-captains. It's definitely just do really. everything, man. <laughs> well, we, it, we were chosen by the coach. The like coach. we tried to get rid of the whole club decision type thing and just be like. This is up to you. This is what you do. It's also something that we definitely just just because we learned. can we can talk to the guys or whatever. Like yeah, yeah. It's it, it, um, anyways, and like we were, I remember talking to Andre and being like for that game because that game was at eleven o'clock at night, right under the lights, like it was beautiful. Playing Italy again, we're feeling good, and like the Italians were probably fucking pissed that they lost to us. Yeah, right. And we're over here chilling, like we're lethargic because he literally it, brought in the best team that he ever, yeah, ever has. Because um, the schedule, like, it, like to just step back, like the schedule in Italy, especially in this town, is like you wake up, it's so hot. You have to wake up at ten. We stretch, uh, physio, go for a run, and then we'll like get the same meal every day. It's like it's like it's like pasta. A, like bread. a bear ch- yeah. bread, a bear chicken breast, and watermelon. Um, that's that's it, the every, day. <laughs> every day. Watermelon <laughs> was the best thing at the end. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Every day, that's the oh, meal. Yeah. It was so funny. So everyone's like grabbing the chili oil and like everything like that, whatever. And then you do like, you just do not. It's too hot. Like it's 52 degrees. You like, nap all day. Yeah, you, you can't yeah. do anything. And then you wake up, you stretch. It's like seven. It's still super hot. And like you take the bus to the, to the game or whatever, get into the stadium. <laughs> And it's like, we're just still so lethargic. And I remember we were chatting and we're like, fuck, like, I hope we don't get, I hope we don't get smashed tonight. Like, that's the feeling that we had. We got slapped seven, nothing like, oh. and that, and that taught me like, this I, is the, this is the fight. The second, this was finals? the second final. Yeah. This wow. was the second, of the final. second tournament of the trip. And we I just got, Italy again. again, yeah, but a different team, but like same coach. Yeah. Like we just got slapped. Like, it was like, just, destroyed. just like yeah. that destroyed, like never before, like seven, nothing reminded me of like back when you used to get slapped as a kid, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, and it was just like a learning experience. Cause it's like preparation is everything. Yeah. It's everything. I think sometimes if you're like an athlete or like you're good at something, you take it for granted. Like I remember as a kid, I never used to stretch. I used to be like, fuck stretching. Like I'm just going to go play. Um, But like the, I think the mindfulness of the preparedness and like what we were lacking just immediately was evident uh, in that game. Well, this is a good time to shout out our sponsors. Uh, Universal Nutrition, (laughs) talking about preparation. Universal Nutrition set us up with some amazing products. Uh, protein, egg pro, creatine. That's a good segue. That was a good one. Eh? <laughs> right. That's a good one. It's so, like the first time we've done a mid mid episode. Yeah, that's really good. Mid roll. So yeah, we'll shout them out. We'll post them in the tag, but um, we'll get you guys some of this stuff too. They're some awesome products. Uh, protein, uh, creatine. Their animal line. I don't know if you guys have ever taken animal stack, animal test, animal no, cut. Everyone said lives in the gym like you, Richard. Well, man, some well, great we're runners out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it helped me gain weight. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Actually, I got this probably would. 
No, the egg pro would be. You're gonna, run, you're gonna gateway. Yeah. Make sure to be nimble on the field. Yeah, no, the egg pro would be solid. Yeah, like, egg honestly, pro would help you put on some some good some proper uh, some proper to muscle. Come back too. from that seven other. Yeah, loss. in terms of what preparation. And, <laughs> <laughs> no, but in terms of preparation, like supplements and and nutrition. Back to your point, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good little good, good segue, Rick. That was good a beautiful segue. segue. <laughs> I got you. I pick up a couple things or two. To jump back in, finish that point though. Do you think it made that that beating of seven nothing made the win not as sweet after you won it? No, def- like def- it, there was just definitely <laughs> okay, like, yeah, like, like we still, like, we still like the win when we still like love the win, but like we were also just like what? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think we got pummeled seven nothing because of that win too in also a way. because you were a little bit for, here on the mouth yeah, yeah. And, then, and then like we had to get you know back down and then you know and then we we had like a five-hour drive to another city vs hey and it it was like an eight-hour drive because the guy went the wrong direction yeah and we're all in these vans that don't have ac with oh, the yeah. yeah. little the the lines in, on the, yeah. on the yeah. windows yeah, yeah, yeah. no no not even that was good. a little scooter van like with like little sliding windows yeah it's like it's like three rows deep. Yeah, you gotta, yeah I know. And, exactly. and, and we used to rent them in Greece and like jam our family and go to the beach and yeah. there's sauna. And everyone's trying yeah, to but sleep. It was eight but eight hours. Yeah. That's bad. <laughs> trying to nap and everything. Trying to like nap that. and yeah. just like everyone's awake but like bobbing around. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just the worst car ride ever. Also <laughs> in Porto, it's probably not an excuse, but they put us in rooms where it's like six people to a room. There's bunk beds in the kitchen and the little kitchenette area. So they just <laughs> shove Last year we had it nice. Room. Last year we had it nice. This year, I don't yeah. know. We this year, you said in Porto. Yeah, in Porto. Okay. No shout, out. no shout out. No shout out. No shout out. Porto's a shout out. Porto's a shout out. Porto's a shout out. 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 There's a spot. There's more shout outs. There's a, so, so. But also on like a little bit more of the fun side. So, you know, when we got to Porto, it's a sleepy, sleepy town. It's a town on the Adriatic. And, you know, first first time there, it's like I didn't realize that people just come out after 2 a.m. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That's your, it's, it's, it's way too hot to function. Um, so and so just... we're, you know, we're, we're down the strip uh, at this like campsite staying in our places. And, uh, you know, uh, boys are going to sleep. Like there's nothing to do tomorrow. We have an off day, whatever the case is. This is our first year. We also didn't have a coach at the time. So it wasn't like a club, like, mm-hmm. a, like a pro club yet. Um, and there was this spot, Moito, um, that became like a staple in like our lives um, for like three years. It, it was like the spot to go to. Um, and it was like we walked past there, super dead, whatever the case is. As soon as 2.30 a.m. hits, it's like the slam. It's like, but like where do all these people come from? Like oh, in yeah. this sleepy, sleepy, sleepy town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like one of the most lit places ever. And so that was like the spot anytime like we had an off day or whatever the case is. As like, we turn up. We got you got to gotta go to Moito. What's it called again? Moito. Shalom Moito. <laughs> I'll take them I'll hit it up. So yeah. <laughs> that's one thing I, I, I've known for a long time. I mean, obviously, I go to Greece in the summers. And like the one that I learned is like, we don't go to dinner till midnight. Like literally, you go like, you go to the beach all day till five, go back, sleep a bit, do whatever, dinner at like 10 to yeah. 12. And then it's like a little bit of a pre-drink at like 2 a.m. you're going out. Yeah, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> I, I'm also not playing soccer tournaments. I'm like sleeping <laughs> the whole next day. <laughs> But uh, okay, so the year, so that's the one of the things you learned yeah. on. Yeah. So from what about the, from the business side, building the like the business and all that, like I guess from the business side, it was first of all not even having a business to begin with, and then trying to put together of who wanted to be a part of it, who wanted to do the actual work to raise the funds, to make the contacts, to get partnerships or sponsorships, um, and. Because we were all friends, it was really tough to kind of divide. Drive accountability. Yeah, that's that's actually perfect. Drive accountability. Like, because everyone was like, oh, I'll get to it later or I don't want to do it or stuff like that. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but you just told us you did. Yeah. And it's a, so you have to strike that balance between your friendship and what's right for the business. So mm-hmm. I know Shabazz uh, touched on this before, but actually implementing a structure is something that we learned. And actually implementing a business plan and planning out what exactly we want to do for every year and every season was probably the best thing that we learned because we actually like for example this season we had like three youth three youth camps all pretty much planned we had a bunch of things on the go we were talking to a lot of sponsorships a lot of partnerships and just kind of all got wiped out yeah yeah just having that plan to begin with putting together an actual forecast. It, it really yeah, helps yeah. you and it really makes things easier. So you guys, and then, so on that note, even though things are like that, which is unfortunate, you guys felt like going to this year, everything you've learned for the three years, you felt confident, like you had a roadmap of this year. This is going to be this, 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 these are our checkpoints. These are our goals. Like that was all laid out for this the, year. This, for this year. Yeah, it was. Cause we actually came together. So I mentioned earlier, like it's time we got a board of directors. Mm-hmm. So we um, got some pretty, you know, great guys and, 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 uh, girls on our board of directors. <laughs> <Anyway>. uh, <laughs> 
Um, so, you know, nice, diverse board of directors. Shout out to diversity. <laughs> there you go. Shout out. <laughs> um, but we, we actually had to create um, a way in which we could start to funnel ideas and actually have a focus. Yeah. Um, we're lucky, right? Like uh, right now I work in the cannabis space and like it's kind of, in oh, a, cool. in, in, it's very similar in a way to cannabis talk, very unknown. No one, no one knows anything. It's like education needs to happen. So like trying to measure You're learning market, on the fly. Kind learning of on thing. the fly, yeah. trying stuff. Um, and then just like having good people to bounce ideas off of. And then, um, I think the biggest thing is like having a focus, right? So for instance, um, we, we launched like a line of like apparel, like sweaters and things like that just cause, uh, and like all of a sudden that was like a, an avenue that was like, oh shit, this could be lucrative. But when we step back and looked at it, it's like, maybe that's not like a right now kind of thing, Yeah, right? Like could be sweet and like people ask us for it all the time, but it's just like, maybe it's not actually something that we should pursue because that's an opportunity cost to yeah. tournament and all the, the other ROI stuff. there yeah. might be a little tougher because the demand isn't equal. It'd be cool if like 10, like 10 exactly. of your friends want it, but then it's like how much time we're going to put into exactly. it. Yeah. Exactly. 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 When no one even knows like what beach soccer yeah, is. Yeah. And, so and it's something like, hey, like you, that's the thing too. You now you have plans too because now you guys know, like, I guess I'm not asking, like you know that, okay, we're in this for the long run. Now we've, we've kind of had that validation, that proof of concept, if you will, that we went into these tournaments. We know we can, we can keep up. Now it's to get serious and now it's to have a plan like for this year, but also, okay, like apparel, we're not going to launch that until we get some tournaments locally yeah. and we'll put that on the docket for later. So yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's that you've learned that through the process as well. And, and trying to make the hard decisions is like the hardest thing. Yeah. <laughs> like trying to, trying to make decisions. It's in the name. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the name. It's like making those decisions that you're going to be unpopular for. Um, like as we separate the business and the club and try and do what's best because like we don't know what's best. You yeah. know what I mean? Like how are we supposed to know? Yeah. You guys are building uh, something yeah, the ground exactly. up. You're building not just like a team. It's like trying to raise a brand to and educate people, which is yeah. just half the battle, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's been, can I ask, what's the toughest decision you've had to make so far? The upcoming cut. <laughs> <laughs> who's the, who's the, not if you guys want right. to No, we don't, make those, we don't make those decisions. Uh, that's that's the coaches. Coaches, job, boards, all that. Yeah, like, the, we had to we had to put that in. Yeah. Like, yeah. The club I, makes those decisions. I don't think there are actually a lot of tough decisions that we've had to make so far. It's only been three years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the team's kind of been set for the three years because the interest at the beginning wasn't as big and then it kind of slowly got bigger throughout. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll give you guys one. Um, so on our and then the second year again we this is just part of a growing club right yeah. and an organization. Second year um, we were playing Argentina um, and it was six. We lost that game six four in the in the semis. And so this is when we went to the consolation versus Brazil and, and dusted them. Uh, and that's it. I'm eight seven. Luckily, <laughs> okay. like lucky um, in extra time. But we were playing Argentina and we we lost that game. And I guess if you know the deal was between you know whatever parties, extenuating parties in our organization that um, you know there'd be some some movement and some other players you know getting getting shots. And so we have you know two goalies. Our goalies are both phenomenal. And the idea was that you know uh, one of the other goalies was gonna play um, for that for that game. And you know that wasn't that was a challenging decision because we have our starting goalie and then you're, you know, you're putting in your backup, um, who's great. Who's phenomenal. Who's fantastic, obviously, but it's a different type of playing style because in, in beach, the goalie is like the quarterback. They need to be really good with their feet. They need to command, um, the, the game. Like that is your quarterback okay. kind of thing. And so it's a different playing style, right? So like maybe when, you know, Andre and I would go out wide, you know, we're playing with a guy who's like, knows, has his feet, maybe the other, uh, keeper you know is is better with his like aerial game throwing, yeah, yeah. things like that and so that was a challenge that was a challenging moment for like our club because it was like even before that game again it goes back to culture and it goes back to it's like we were kind of divided mm-hmm. right because we didn't have an authority figure that second year and we were just trying to figure it out by ourselves and we were divided before that game luckily like because like that game was back and forth we were up two nothing five three like if we were in the same in the m- right mindset we would have locked them up you know what i mean yeah but like I like. I just remember like when they tied it seven seven at the end of the game. I was like, I don't like. We just can't win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that was like a really hard. Uh, like if you're, I'm sure, I'm sure you've been through this, man. In, in hockey, it's like if your team is just not on the same page, or there's like something brewing in there. Yeah, going onto the field is challenging. It's it, res- so it comes out hard. To play. Yep. Um, but the W brought us back together. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I guess it's good now that you guys have the coaches, have yeah, the, chair, yeah, yeah. the board and all that stuff that can make the harder decisions and let you guys focus on 
I guess, building this stuff, but also focus on playing and, and being pro athletes. I'm not going to air quote, but like being pro athletes. It, it might be an air quote. No, it's yeah, pro athletes. It's an air quote. Because they're playing like countries and yeah. like stuff like that. I mean, like, that's pro- there's a fr- there's a There's a phase, I think, or phrase. I think it's like fake it till you make right. it. That's <laughs> it. That's how play. That's one of my go tos. Um, do you know what, though? Even when you said that, how the, the loss kind of, you guys were divided. Without the losses, you don't appreciate the W's, right? Absolutely. It's, again, going back to winning and losing, but it's so true. Sometimes mm-hmm. you can think you're on the same page and then you take a loss and then everyone. I don't want to say pointing fingers, but everyone's so upset. And and if you're not upset after a loss, then you're obviously not a compa- you're not it's a different story. Right? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's just a competitive nature of people. But um, after a loss, I remember like even on when I played competitive sports, like I'd be so bummed. Like I'd be so so yeah. mad. And like my teammates weren't mad. I'd be like, why aren't you mad? Yeah. Like we just lost. We just got our asses handed to us. Yep. Yeah. There's times like in men's league, you can laugh about it and whatever it is, what it is. Like we're here to just exercise. But when I was a kid, I didn't play sports just. To, to show up and to yeah. exercise like I do now. Now, like when I was a kid, I wanted to win. I wanted to play in the NHL. I wanted to play in whatever major league I was competing in that sport. Like I played to win. Mm-hmm. So every loss took so much out of you. And then the, when you got those wins and I won some major tournaments as a kid, it's so much better. No big so, deal. Well, not like I'm not. <laughs> no, I wasn't amazing. Yeah, I'm like, I, I yeah, shout out to out. Ricky's major tournament. <laughs> 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 As a kid, I won. Oh, I just love when he makes jokes and then everyone gets in on like, it. So we, we joke about it. So I love, like, you know, like comedians do it. They'll say a joke at the beginning and they'll like loop back. It's a callback. Yeah, right? that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. He so does it a lot. I do it every like, episode. Every he every finds episode. one, he does it. And Some lately, are better than others, but lately, lately they've been, they've been all oh. on fire. Uh. <laughs> Our guests have used them. That's, so that's another good. So it's true. It's true. Um, I want to say, what's next for Canada Beach Soccer? That was my next question, too. We're on the same page, my dude. My pal. Shout out my pal. <laughs> <laughs> What's um, next? Yeah. Like what does the future have? I think, the, I, I think, I think there's like a, a couple different uh, ways to look at it. I think like macro scale, looking at like beach soccer as a, um, as a movement, as a lifestyle, like Andre mentioned, I think, um, I think it's picking up steam. Uh, and I think as like Canada becomes like more and more gentrified, like we talk a lot about immigrants, first generation, whatever the case is, I think the sport's just naturally going to come. And obviously, you know, using agencies like reach and doing things to, to cross promote and market, I think that's going to be huge. And then, you know, hopefully getting some of those world cup games televised, like this was the first year they were actually televised in uh, Canada. Oh, they, right. they played. Yeah. They, oh. they, they, they Usually played. it's only like Europe and Asia. Sky sports, yeah, yeah, like yeah. kind of thing. Well, yeah, people yeah. that have those like crazy like Bell Direct satellites yeah, or whatever, yeah, they, yeah. they get them. But. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this year was broadcast, I think, on TSN or Some, Sports yeah. or, so, or something. But like we got to watch it, right? So I think so. on that scale, it's like that. And I think, you know, uh, like shifting down, like we have a big role to play in that, right? Canada Beach Soccer, trying mm-hmm. to lead a movement. And so I think from the, from the, club level it's like getting the best players we possibly can yeah um coast to coast right like obviously we're getting a lot of toronto players but we get a lot of notes from uh great players in vancouver and and uh and calgary and like all sorts of different places mm-hmm. so i think it's on that front like right now we have a men's team i also think it's like there's a lot of great female talent in canada obviously look yeah, at yeah. our teams yeah um so i think it's like starting you know even getting to the point where we're like you know trying to recruit great top female talent and like getting some getting some like healthy um side-by-side competition between the, the male yeah. and the females too right um and really driving that program forward um so get top talent get top talent get top talent uh and then continue to like drive the the club and the business side forward by you know youth camps like trying to trying to build the tournament yeah. right get more exposure maybe even build a league build a league i was just gonna say that yeah um you know our uh, our our technical director and, and head coach paulo he uh, runs i think the u20 canadian team now yeah, right he's, yeah he's a goalie coach for the u21 canadian national team oh yeah wow. he's a goalie coach but like he's doing incredible things he's getting us lots of exposure like he was the, the thing i think which is tough is like we need a home base yeah. Um, and we have a home base for four months of the year. Um, but the thing is, it snows for eight months. Of yeah. The year. It's yeah. Weather. Yeah. Like, there's no way we can get around that. So, like an indoor facility, whoever wants to help us build one. Shout uh, out, to- John Tory, <laughs> building an indoor facility, bro. <laughs> no, but um, so yeah. like eventually it's building a full year round facility. Yeah. But what about like the place like we, we joked about earlier, but like volleyball court, stuff like that? Like, so for winter, there's one in the kinda... East End actually by Railside Park. It's right yeah, soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, can they not do? The, can they, they're not big enough to make them into soccer fields. And... I, I don't know about Railside specifically. So, but no, I mean like well, the, te- the volleyball. Let's, court. let's use Downsview Park yeah. for example, right? Like they've got 
indoor soccer, they have numerous so fields. We, we like, spoke to Downsview. A lot of people don't know because of the liability that's uh, associated with it. Okay. So we've actually called a lot of facilities and we called about four different facilities that were indoor beach volleyball like for during the winter training and only one actually let us practice really really yeah so uh, that, that that's been the issue um, that's really been the issue yeah and i think i think it's also just like we can we can get like you know our, our squad together and we can throw these like kids camps but there's no actual teams that are training outside of yeah. really us right and so the more we can get you know i think a league going or like at least like show some sort of demand um then you know hopefully it'll, it's like a slow drip it'll start a movement yeah and, you know I think, the community the culture exactly and, I, and we're hoping that like you know now we're getting like 20 25 guys out to come play with us and you know we're getting lots of dms and things like that so i think not at a time <laughs> <laughs> the more we can uh the more we can we can like spread the word through like these guys and like I don't know, man. It's 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 tough, right? Because like there's sure. so many, there's so many like money, marketing, like so many things. But I think it's groundswell, create a movement, um, and try and just like do the right thing. So I think maybe like ask us again. Hopefully, we'll, we'll you know we'll be somewhere else in four or five years. Like facility, yeah. leagues, tourneys, uh, yeah, traveling yeah. internationally. Do you know what? It's you, you think about so many other sports that kind of I'm not let's say I'm, call them non Olympic sports. You know, like spike ball. There's spike ball leagues in Toronto yeah. now. There's Roller hockey is a huge sport in Toronto, like, and they play all year round. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, what's another one? You think like beach? Oh, beach volleyball is an Olympic sport. But there's so many leagues that are similar to beach soccer that are already here. It's like, why can't beach soccer have its own league here? Mm-hmm. Why can't beach soccer have its own league? Yeah. Here? Why can't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, like, if you think about it, like, like even like real side is a small indoor field. Like I play pickup there with my buddies. We just play like it's organized Monday nights. Well, not anymore, but um, it's just like pick up and you play like. People play pick up volley like they play volleyball leagues. Like, okay, maybe it's a little tougher to run in sand, but I mean, who wouldn't want to play like in like a sand, sand soccer? If anything, it seems more appealing like as a unisex sport than like like playing even like co-ed, like getting women involved in all that stuff. I'm bumping the wall. The, yeah. the the best thing is too about it. It's like if you guys played it, you'd love it. Anyone who plays it like immediately loves it, and also. It's like you can take a pro and you can put them on the sand and they are going to fuck up a hundred yeah. times. And so everyone's vulnerable. And so you almost like as soon as you get after like uh, like away from that, like, oh, I'm going to fuck up, I'm going to fuck up. Because like a lot of it's like you're pushing the ball like forward with the top of your foot trying to get under it, flick it up. It's kind of like a gas pedal to yeah. get it down. So you can gas get, pedal to get it down ramp. so you can cut, you can put a ramp underneath it, pop it up so that now you can like actually maneuver, right? Because oh. if you're dribbling in the sand. Um, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You can be uh, the fastest person, but as soon as you take like two steps, the ball's not going where you want and the person can catch up to you. And, okay. and, and so, so that's why there's, there's also an opportunity for like really good talent to start to emerge that maybe thought like, hey, I'm never going to get to like a TFC level or I'm never going to get to you know, yeah, a national yeah. level or something. So we're hoping we can get the, you know, the best talent to come out and just find ways to give them opportunities. Okay. Have, have you guys thought about doing like adult charity like tournaments, so, like beach soccer tournaments in the summer? Because I think... For, I'm thinking uh, ball hockey right now. Ball hockey and not an Olympic sport. They do like um, there's the road to uh, not the road to conquer. There's the big ball hockey tournament. There was play on that used to be like another yeah. big charity. Road and it's just yeah, that, that's one. But then there's another one play on where there's actual road hockey is more just charity. There's no winners and lo- well, there's mm-hmm. winners and losers, but there's no champion, right? Yeah, play yeah. on is <laughs> like a full on tournament. Like goes on and there's the Sundays like the seating and it's crazy. Yeah. But for you guys, again, it's just about getting kids to play or getting people, not even kids, yeah. getting people to play. So I think maybe if you guys, I don't know. So we, actually yeah. did, we did try to do that oh, in our yeah. second year. Um, but because the sport's so unknown and because our reach isn't big enough yet, we didn't really get we a did, lot we, of we, we threw, we, we threw, threw a football league tournament. Yeah. It, we got good interest. And like this year, we were going to actually try and throw that throw that tournament. We had big plans this year. But well, you know what? Maybe it was a reset yeah. year for us. If you guys do a beach soccer tournament, I can get like three teams. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> so well, us, we can get like five well, teams. Well, well, we play in a lot of charity. Like, yeah, we play in a couple of charity soccer I've, tournaments. I've always said this. Any charity physical event. Yeah, we'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> cool. Honestly. Like, donate really money to charity and playing a sport with my friends or with my buddies or with my family. Like I'm involved. Like even if it's half to charity, half to your organization or whatever, even if it's just like your organization is doing a fundraiser or something. Like I think you, 
I know. Let us know. We'll, yeah. we'll definitely yeah. put it. And hopefully by that time we got like a million viewers. We'll get them yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got a couple thousand now, but we'll get we we'll get up to a million. Millions. We'll get we'll get them all involved. Perfect. We'll get the Perfect. merch going. We'll do some giveaways and shit. We can do lots of stuff, man. Yeah, we can do lots of stuff. Just Live just, pals podcast on the side. Hundred percent. Oh, oh my god, we'll that would be We've been talking all. about doing it for a while. Oh my now. god, live 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 a live one. Well, the other thing too is like if you guys do practice, I mean, like it's summer now, it's not a whole lot going on. I mean, if you're practicing like legit practicing, yeah. don't call me, I'm shit. <laughs> but if you guys are just like messing around one day, whatever, like on a weekend, like I'll, I'll down the drop by, like both of yeah. us, right? We'll drop by and see what, what it's like, and like you know, take some we can, pictures up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be wicked that'd for be sure, wicked, man. Yeah. For sure, we uh, we've been getting like the the real practices in uh, twice a week now which is good yeah starting to get like into a nice rhythm but yeah well, um, as, as real as 10 people allows you to but yeah, yeah that's yeah. a tough part right yeah so so what's next now i mean we're kind of nearing the end but what's next for you guys like what does this rest of this year happen is it just wait and see with covid is it like is just the tournament you said in the fall is that still happening like what is it up in the air so yeah that one's still a Apparently, it's still going on. Um, they had a lot of tournaments. So Worldwide Beach Soccer had a lot of tournaments uh, that were supposed to happen like uh, prior to September, yeah. but those got all pushed to September. Okay. So this one, because it's in October, it hasn't really been canceled yet. I guess it's going to be depending on th if there's a second wave, if yeah. Turkey's affected really hard, if Canada gets it, whether travel's allowed, um, if we have to quarantine for 14 days if we go Got over it. there yeah. for yeah. like a five-day, four-day tournament. Still a lot doesn't really make sense. any sense. Yeah, so right? still a lot up in the air. But you're, you guys are training as if training. we yeah. have to train as if it's going to happen. Yeah, right? yeah. exactly. You know, strangely enough, like yeah, Virginia's having a tournament coming up, and like you just no, they can't. They canceled it. Yeah, you just never know. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, from that perspective, it's like keep training and then keep developing good partnerships. Um, you know, still have a lot of our partners on board, still talking to them, still trying to build with them. Um, we threw a, a, a poker tournament earlier. Well. I guess last year through a poker tournament, you know, good fun. Raised Remember good the one money. I invited you to and you said no? <laughs> you invited me? <laughs> no shout out to Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> no shout out to me. Do you? Oh, you, I think I do remember that actually. I got man, I had a lot going on. I don't know. That's right. No, that's a bad excuse. Next time I'll be there. Um, um, but yeah, just, just honestly, just trying to be prepared for whenever things start to open up phase three next week, whatever yeah. the case is and start, start like rebuilding. We, we did a lot of reflecting. We learned a lot of good lessons and, um, this was good, man. Like sometimes you just need like a reflection reset yeah. type, of, type of vibe. Yeah. Blessing in disguise kind of. Yeah. yeah. It gives you a chance to get settled, get you all your ducks in a row and, and get ready. So that when things do open up, you're, yeah. you're ready to start knocking yeah. them down. Right. Yeah. Guys, honestly, like I just on that note too, like, I'm fired up about beach soccer now. Like I did not like the whole story about how you guys like met and started this. I mean, I've known this guy from when he's in first year. Not, I didn't think he'd be this successful, this cool at this point in his life. <laughs> he didn't. He no, told no. me every day. No, but honestly, like the story <laughs> is cool. Guy. I love a good narrative. I love a good like this. Is how it started it just became like out of nowhere and whatever. So, like kudos to you guys. This was super fascinating and like really, and really Lucas, interesting to hear Lucas. about it. Uh, and yeah, Lucas. And Lucas, shout out yeah. Lucas. Next time we'll get we'll get everybody on board and and yeah like when stuff opens up again guys if you ever want to come back on and chat or there's stuff going on and exciting we can help out and share I mean, we're more than happy to thanks guys we're of not course. done yet though we got no, a couple we got two uh, more questions I was just kind of like showing you guys uh, a little that, was, that, was a good that, that was a good yeah, yeah I thought that was, that was a, a good finale. conclusion yeah. we ain't done yet I was just <laughs> waiting for you to walk off I thought the music was coming Jolly drops <laughs> we actually had yeah we got two questions we asked basically every every guest um, if there was a movie about your lives who would you want to star as you love that question. Uh, Leo, no questions asked. Yeah, <laughs> or Leo, Leo or Idris Elba. Oh, oh Idris Elba, that's sick. Good. That's yeah. Leo, sick dude. With yeah, Idris Elba. Yeah. Idris Elba. So wasn't he the world's Leo? sexiest man like two years ago? Bro, I guess. We saw him Elba. DJ in Ibiza. Like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, he's a professional that, DJ yeah. too. Yeah. He does everything. He also he's did like a Muay Thai fight, like a legit he's Muay Thai sick. fight. He's, he's cool. so sick. I remember we're at a club in Ibiza, and I walk in and I see this guy like, and we just just walked in and like massive clubs in Ibiza, and I see the side room. This guy like, yeah, and he's like in a neon like bright like you know when like neon green was like the in thing up maybe a year ago, like everyone had neon green shirts. I was like, that guy looks familiar. I'm kind of far back. So I look up who's DJ. I'm like Idris we're also Elba. Seeing two, two, two people there. Yeah, I, Idris Elba. I was like, sick. We're staying here. We it was like probably like two in the morning. When we got there. We stayed to like three or four. I was sick. Yeah, I was sick. It's good. Uh, one. Andre, what about you? Um, I'm gonna go more realistic <laughs> and do like uh, Andrew Garfield. Oh, oh that's damn. a good one. You look like Andrew Garfield. That's a good one, man. <laughs> you thought about this before, eh? <laughs> no, I've You've just been called that shit before. Okay, and I had a lot okay. of, that's a good one, though. That's I really good. Sick. That's yeah, very accurate. Too. Yeah. You're probably that's probably the most 
accurate self-reflection like answer you've seen. Like we've had like we had someone who was the one who we said Shia LaBeouf or was it? Shia LaBeouf was recently. Yeah, Nick Enriquez. Nick Enriquez. Yeah, but he didn't. He didn't say it. You no, he said. Did. It. No, he, he said, said it. it. Yeah. So I mean, who's who's a top brown actor? Name one. I don't know. I wasn't just stereotyping. Just, come on. Uh, As the, guy from, the, guy from ben, the guy from Venom. Uh, no. Uh, who, who? Come on, on Johnny. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm actually just watching Silicon Valley now. That's how I know his Best name. ever, yeah. So funny. Um, okay, more brown actors. No, we've had somebody like... <laughs> who did Neil Wong say? I can't remember. Yeah. See, like people don't like. We have people who have like. We, we, like it's no. It's not just by like. Uh, no, no, yeah. of course. Yeah, <laughs> like, we, we, had Christina, we had Christina in yesterday. I don't even remember her answer. <laughs> you said she looks like Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. She's a uh, 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 Richard, Richard Adams. Adams. Yeah, that's it. Nice. Uh, okay, uh, last good, one. Last question. <laughs> 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 Honestly, <laughs> that was, that was, that was it's okay. It's good. <laughs> last one. If you can give one piece of advice to your younger selves, what would it be? Go ahead. You started the last one. Continue. <laughs> this, this gets wow. people like a little bit. You take your time, don't. There's no rush. That's a good one. Yeah. Good questions. See, mine is tough. Mine yeah, yeah, I like both of no, them. I'll, I'll take this one. I would actually say try harder. Um, actually work hard at what you do and take pride in it. Uh, th that's the best The best thing I could actually say to my young self. That's a good one. Good advice. Do you know, when you're younger, sometimes like, while you think yeah, of the yeah, answers, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll jump in. When you're younger, you don't, if I had the same mentality I have right now when I was like nine, 10, I'd be a professional athlete right now. Like I, I understand the importance of proper sleep, proper diet, proper training. Like when I was a kid, I had an hour dryland session. Like my parents paid for it and you don't realize like that's like 60 bucks or 50 or however much they paid. I have no idea. And like, I would just do it. I was going through the motions. Now it's like when I work out, I don't, I don't pay anybody, but it's like, I'm here. I have an hour. I got to grind because I've only got an hour. I need to get the most out of this one hour. Like if I had this mentality when I was younger, that like give everything you do 110%, you think you are, but then now it's like I've trade for a triathlon. Now I know what it really, what 110% really looks like when you're a kid, you're just going through all oh, my abs are okay. I'm done my sit-ups. Oh my, you know, I'm having heavy breathing. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to walk this. I have off. one bead of sweat coming down my, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I worked yeah. hard. That was me. That was me. Now it's like, Still man, I'm training for a marathon. I'm like, fuck, this is hard. But you know what? That, that's what makes a difference between like the Sidney Crosby's of the world, the Ronaldo's, the Messi's. They, I feel like they're in their mindset. Yeah. They knew from it's never over. There's no finish line. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and when they were born, they just knew that knew. that's what they wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, like yeah. we had Eric Radford, uh, he's an Olympic gold medalist on the podcast. And he two knew time. from, two-time Olympic gold medalist. He knew from like when he was a kid that that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to be the best. He was a figure skater. He wanted to be the best figure skater in the world. That was his thing. Like he got bullied as a kid, like faced some like serious hardships and, you know, roadblocks along the way. He didn't care. He knew that he had one goal in sight to win yeah. a gold medal at the Olympics. And it's like, and man, he won two. And he won two, right? He won so, two in one year and he won like, for, for a two-year span or – Two years span, he was the best in the world. Yeah, the world champion. Best, best pairs, pairs figure skater yeah. for two years. Like, it like you're the Megan, number one in the world. No one's better than you. That's Megan crazy. Megan Dumal. Do Hamill. Do Hamill, yeah. Do Hamill, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, I got it. I uh, gave you enough time there. You better have a good <laughs> yeah, answer now. That's good. I just temporarily forgot it, but I'll get it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's still thinking about well, Idris Elba. <laughs> All right, no, 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 I got Sorry, it. Got let's it. go back to our sponsors. <laughs> Universal <laughs> Nutrition. Um, <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a couple things. It'd be... Um, Number one, listen like ninety five percent more. Um, like just fucking shut the hell up and listen. Yeah. Um, number two, listen to your parents. Listen to those people around you. Like find good mentors and like all, like Sidney Crosby. Like all, all these all these people had people they looked up to and like just like revered and wanted to just get after. And like you need a good role model. Um, and you know I, I think we were lucky to like I was lucky to have you know a few in my life. And I think the second one is like don't give a fuck about what anyone says to you about anything you're uniquely you and like you can do whatever the fuck you want um so just go get after it and like don't 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 care just go get after it and be a kind person that's what i'd say that's great yeah. advice we literally just mentioned that on like one of the last episodes it's like f what anybody thinks it's like you do you if you're happy about it like it'll, it'll oh, yeah, show the product this. yeah we had a fashion at the end designer. of the night yeah. you're like when you go to sleep at night yeah that's like your own thing yeah, yeah it's like you're in your own head like f what anybody else thinks if you're happy with what you're doing and your product what you're building or the organization or the people you hang out with like yo f what everybody else thinks and you combine that with like kindness as a currency and like it's money yeah you know what i mean like you got it kind you of don't really, that's two things actually those are like perfect points and kind of great ones to end it on because you don't realize those two things when you're a kid you want your like 
I, at least myself, I was so consumed. Like, I always said, like, we would joke. I'd be like, I don't care what anyone thinks about me. Even though I, like, it ate me up inside. <laughs> always. And I would say it, like, because I thought it was cool and, like, I didn't care. Until, like, two years ago. I, it literally until I took a trip where I left, like, do whatever I wanted, like, travel the world. Until I came back, I didn't really realize what it meant to just be happy with yourself. And, like, until you're happy with yourself, you can't really be truly happy. But, like, it, it, it's crazy that at a young age, you're trying to make everyone happy and conform and this and that. And if you just put your head, not your head down, yeah. but, like, focus on just making yourself happy. Like if you want to read a book, read a book. If your friends are partying, you don't want to, don't party. But you don't realize that you want to do what everyone does. Exactly. And it takes so long to learn that. Some people go their whole lives though, yeah. not realizing that. But the last thing you said is kindness is one of the things that like, most people, I think we're all raised to be kind, but you don't really realize what it means, right? Like, when you're young, I like a, just a quick example. Like you think that like the person who messed up your order at the counter, like not to yell at them, but you're like, you blame them or, the, or your flight's delayed or the ticket got messed up and you're like, it's their fault. And you kind of like, you don't realize even the times where you're having a bad day, being kind in those moments gets you a lot farther than being an asshole. Yeah. Um, so kindness of currency. Yeah. yeah. Kindness of currency is a cool one. I never really heard it explained that way, but that's, that's a good way to put it. Thanks yeah. for having us on. This yeah, awesome. I appreciate this it, guys. Is, this guys, honestly, this was such a good conversation. And you, I personally learned so much about the sport of beach soccer. And yeah. I think hopefully our listeners do take take something away from this. Support. Shout out to our listeners. Yeah, <laughs> big shout out to them. We always love them. Uh, but yeah, like again, I hope they, they take away a lot I'll of this. Back one last time. <laughs> if uh if they want to find out more about you guys personally or Canada Beach Soccer, where can they where can they go? Uh, me personally, um, I, I, I got to go with the LinkedIn plug, I guess. That's where I'm most vocal. So, oh, okay, Shabazz, okay. Shabazz Car, LinkedIn, and then spell it out just for the stuff. One, what is it? S H A H B A A Z. Wow. Bam. Bam. Last name. Last name. Kara. K A R A. Okay. Uh, I, I could have got that. <laughs> hyphen. Hyphen. Verani. But I don't use that. Okay. I'll LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm gonna try on LinkedIn. I'm actually the first person ever to plug LinkedIn on here. <laughs> but I'm actually very vocal on LinkedIn too. So yeah. I'm gonna hit you up. Andre, okay. what about you? Uh, for me, I guess it'd be on my Instagram at Goyo Andre, and for Canada yeah, Beach yeah, Soccer at, at Can Beach Soccer. At, yeah. At Can Beach Soccer. Yeah. Sweet. All right, perfect. We'll plug all the links, even the LinkedIn in the bio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All the LinkedIn in. That's a love first. That. That's so that. sick. That I is actually, it. that's love sick. That. I like it. Makes sense. He, he's a LinkedIn champ. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I'm a big fan of it. Okay. Fan of it. Yeah. Gotta be. You gotta yeah, be. Hot. He's got a network. Got a network. Love it. Boys, a lot of fun. Yeah. This was great. Um, yeah, thanks. Yeah, nice. and hopefully the season gets back underway, and best of luck in the future. And again, sure. anytime you guys do something, let us know. We'll we'll definitely plug it on. Except all, poker, on I won't all. be there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll plug I, it on. I'm now going to be buy your invite. <laughs> George gave me his number. I'm going to be texting him every day. But that's, that's a big mistake. <laughs> oh, you know it. Yeah. <laughs> all, all right, right boys. Uh, signing off, pals. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Peace. <laughs>